Friday, second week of Advent, <clears throat> morning meditation, December 11th, 2020. Meditations are taken from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choice's Teacher in Moral Theology. Act of Faith in the Presence of God, in Nomina Patri, Fili, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Most Holy, Adorable, and Undivided Trinity, One God and Three Persons, I believe that Thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility, and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of humility, litany of humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That, in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this, our morning meditation, through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever Virgin. Ave Maria, gratia, pana dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, and benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, or Panobis peccatoribus, nuc in hora mortis nostre. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and it shall be created, and shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, and instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Grant in that same spirit that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Morning Meditation. Considerations on the Religious State. Consider the immense glory that religious will enjoy in heaven. Quote, he will render to everyone according to his works. Matthew 16, verse 27. From this you can judge how exceedingly great will be the reward that God will give in heaven to good religious on account of the great merits they acquire every day. Quote, going, they wept, they went and wept, casting their seeds, but coming they shall come with joyfulness, carrying their sheaves. Psalm 125, verse 6 and 7. Consider in the first place what St. Bernard says, that it is difficult for religious who die in the religious state to be damned. From the cell to heaven, the way quote, from the cell to heaven, the way is easy. One scarcely ever descends from the cell into hell. Unquote. The reason the saint adduces is quote, because one scarcely ever perseveres in it until death, unless he be predestinated. Unquote. For it is with difficulty a religious perseveres until death, if he be not of the number of the elect of paradise. Therefore, St. Lawrence Justinian called the religious state the gate of paradise. Quote, of that heavenly city, this is the gate, unquote. And he said that, therefore, quote, religious have a great sign of predestination, unquote. 
Consider, moreover, that the reward of heaven, as the apostle says, is a, quote, crown of justice, 2 Timothy 4, 8. Wherefore God, though he rewards us for our works more abundantly than we deserve, rewards us nevertheless in proportion to the works we have done. Quote, he will render to everyone according to his works, unquote. From this you can judge how exceedingly great will be the reward which God will give in heaven to good religious, in consideration of the great merits they daily acquire. The religious gives to God all his earthly goods and is content to be entirely poor, without possessing anything. The religious renounces all attachment to his parents, friends, and country in order to unite himself more closely to God. The religious continually mortifies himself in many things which he would enjoy in the world. The religious finally gives to God his whole self by giving him his will through the vow of obedience. The dearest thing that we have to give is our own will. And what God, of all other things, requires of us most is the heart, that is to say, the will. Quote, my son, give me thy heart. Unquote. He who serves God in the world will give him possessions, but not himself. He will give him part and not the whole. For he will give him indeed his goods by alms deeds, his food by fasting, his blood by dis disciplines, etc. But he will always reserve for himself his own will, fasting when he pleases, praying when he likes. But the religious, giving his own w will, gives himself and gives all, gives not only the fruits of the tree, but the whole tree itself. Whence he may then truly say to him, O Lord, having given thee, my, given thee my will, I have nothing more to give thee. It is possible, O my God, and my true lover. Now, is it possible, O my God, my, and my true lover, that thou so much desirest my good to be loved by me, and that I, miserable that I am, desire so little to love and to please thee? For what end hast thou favored with me with so many graces and taken me out of the world? O oh, my Jesus, I understand thee. Thou lovest me much. Thou wouldst have me love thee much and be all thine, in this life and in the next. Thou wishest that my love should not be divided with creatures, but will have it holy for thyself, the only good, the only lovely one, and worthy of infinite love. Ah, my Lord, my treasurer, my love, my all. Yes, I pant and truly desire to love thee and to love no other but thee. And therefore, in all that the religious does through obedience, he is sure to do the will of God perfectly and merits by all he does. Not only when he prays, when he hears confessions, when he preaches or fasts or practices other mortifications, but also when he takes his food, when he sweeps his room, when he makes his bed, when he takes his rest when he recreates himself. For doing all this through obedience, in all he does, the will of God. St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi said that everything done through obedience is a prayer. Hence St. Anselm, speaking of those who love obedience, asserted that all the religious do is meritorious for them. St. Aloysius Gonzaga said that in religion, one travels, as were, in a vessel in which even he who does not labor advances. Oh, how much more will a religious gain in one month by observing his rule than a secular with all his penance and prayers in a year? Of that disciple of Dorotheus called Dostheus, it was revealed that for the five years he had lived under obedience, there was given to him in heaven the glory of St. Paul the Hermit and of St. Anthony the Abbot, both of whom had for so many years lived in the desert. Religious, it is true, have to suffer the inconvenience of regular ob observance, Quote, going they went up, but when they are called to the other life, they will go to heaven, and with joyfulness, carrying their sheaves. Psalm 125, 6 and 7. Whence they will sing, quote, the lines are fallen unto me in goodly places, for my inheritance is goodly to me. Psalm 15, verse 6. These bonds which have bound me to the Lord have become for me exceedingly precious, and the glory they have acquired for me is exceedingly great. I thank thee, Jesus, for this desire thou hast given me. Preserve it in me, always increase it in me, and grant that I may please thee and love thee on this earth as thou desireth, so that I may come hereafter to love thee face to face with all my strength in paradise. Behold, this is all that I ask from thee, 
Thee will I love, O oh my God, I will love Thee. And for Thy love I offer myself to suffer every pain. I will become a saint, not that I may enjoy great delight in heaven, but to please Thee much, O oh my beloved Lord, and to love Thee much forever. Graciously hear me, O Eternal Father, for the love of Jesus Christ. My mother Mary, for the love of this thy son, help thou me. Thou art my hope. From thee I hope for every good. Spiritual reading. Counsels concerning a religious vocation. <coughs> <coughs> Five. The means to be employed for preserving a religious vocation. B. Prayer. In the second place, it's necessary to remember that these vocations are only preserved by prayer. He who gives up prayer will certainly lose his vocation. It is necessary to pray and to pray much. Therefore, let him who feels himself called not omit to make every morning after rising an hour's meditation, or at least one for half an hour in his own room, if he can do so without molestation, and if not, in the church, and likewise for half an hour in the evening. Let him not omit also to make every day a visit to the Most Holy Sacrament and to the Most Blessed Virgin Mary in order to obtain the grace of perseverance in his vocation. And let him not omit to receive Holy Communion three times or at least twice a week. His meditations ought almost always to be on his vocation, considering how great a favor he has received from God in being thus called by him and how much more easily he will secure his eternal salvation if he be faithful in following it. And on the contrary, to how great a danger of being lost he exposes himself if he be unfaithful. Let him then especially keep before his eyes the hour of death and consider the contentment that he will then feel if he shall have obeyed God and the pains and the remorse he will experience if he should die in the world. To this end, <clears throat> I shall add some considerations on which he may make his meditation. It is moreover necessary that all prayers, that all his prayers to Jesus and Mary, and especially those after communion and in the visits, be directly directed to obtain perseverance. In these prayers and communions, let him always renew the offering of himself to God, saying, Behold, O Lord, I am no longer mine own, I am thine. Already have I given myself to thee, and now I renew this my offering of my whole self. Accept of me and give me strength to be faithful to thee, and to retire as quickly as possible into thy house. <clears throat> C. Recollection. In the third place, it is necessary to be recollected. This will not be possible unless he withdraws from worldly reunions and secular amusements. <clears throat> and indeed, as long as we are in the world, what suffices to cause the loss of vocation? A mere nothing. One day of dissipation, a word from a friend, a passion not mortified a little attachment, some groundless fear, some slothfulness not overcome. And one of these suffices to bring to naught all one's good resolutions of retiring from the world and of giving oneself entirely to God. Wherefore, he who is called to religion ought to keep perfectly recollected, detaching himself from everything of this world. His occupation while waste, waiting should be prayer and frequently frequenting the sacraments, and he should pass his time at home or in church. Let him who will not act thus, but who distracts himself by pastimes, be persuaded that he will undoubtedly lose his vocation. He will indeed feel remorse for not following his vocation, but he certainly will not follow it. Oh, how many, by neglecting these precautions, have lost their vocation and afterwards their souls. A prayer for perseverance, to be said often and fervently. My Lord Jesus Christ, who didst choose for thyself the most bitter death of the cross, that I might die a happy death, ah, since thou hast so loved me as to call me out of the world to follow in thy footsteps, and be thus uni always unite, united to thy loving heart, bind me, I beseech thee, dear Jesus, with the sweet chain of thy Love wholly to thyself, that I may never more be separated from thee. O oh, my beloved Redeemer, I do desire to be grateful and faithful to thy grace and to my vocation. But I fear, lest through my own weakness, I should be faithless. My Jesus, do not allow that it should be so. No, let me die rather than I should ever abandon thee. May I never forget that special 
love which thou hast shown me. I love thee, my dear Savior. Thou art now and wilt ever be the only master of my heart and soul. I quit all and choose thee alone for my only treasure. Go, creatures, go far away. My God is my only good. He is my love. He is my all. My Jesus, I love thee, and in loving thee I wish to spend my whole life, be it long or short. I embrace thee. I clasp thee to my heart. In thy loving arms I wish to die. This grace I ask for, and I care for nothing else. Make me live always burning with thy love, and when my end shall have at length come, let me give forth my last breath in an ardent act of love to thee. O Mary Immaculate, do thou obtain for me this grace. My hope is in thy powerful intercession. Help me to forsake the world. Come to my rescue now. Succor me and obtain for me the grace to overcome myself and to become a saint. Amen. Concluding prayer, I give thee thanks, O God, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will that I may, in uniformity with your divine will, O triune God, keep my resolutions and keep them well. For the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of life now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee, and I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay that thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and ungrateful as I have been even until now? No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance and thy holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. In nomen Apache Fili, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Have a blessed day and morning, O slaves of Mary.